Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, closing out the Haskell Saturday card with graded stakes action. Let's take a look at the field for race number 14, the grade three Molly pitcher for Phillies and Mares going a mile and a 16th. This is a really strong field, Mike. You've got the proven commodity in the number one she's a Julie. She's just coming off a grade one stakes win, and I'm just going to have to come out and say I was completely wrong. I had written her off. I thought it was all done, and she pulls out a $30 win last time out in the FIPS. She's the proven commodity. Then you got the up-and-comer, Royal Flag, only making start number five for Chad. Yeah, they're two, um, you know, they're, they're, they're a little bit opposite in the way that they've uh, come along so far anyway, but they're both, they both look really good to me. I did, you know, ultimately think there's a field of 11 in here. I thought there was a ton of filler. I don't know how many true contenders there really are, but the two inside horses are very good. And the horse on the outside, Horologist, I just think she's really underrated, Dan. And Horologist also has done some good work at Monmouth Park in the past. We take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. We're expecting a strong pace up front. Red bar scenario from time form U.S. Gotham Gala adds the blinkers. She's expected to be up close to the pace. We know that she's a Julie's really tactical. You can do just about anything with her. I think she'll just save ground in the second flight. And the number nine also expected to show some good early speed in this race. That's sweet Sammy D. I'm not sure if it's going to be as fast as time form expected it to be mike but i think it'll be solid that's how i uh, thought about it as well dan i you know i don't think they're going to be walking on the lead there are plenty of horses who want to be forward but i didn't see a ton of blazers in here here's the multiple grade one winner she's a julie winning the ogden phipps beating some nice horses in point of honor and ollie's candy we turn into the stretch of the FIPS, and she's a Julie's in between horses right now. It looks like she might be under a little bit of a ride. Ollie's Candy looks like she might be home free. Point of honor is on the outside. She's a Julie just shows heart, determination, and class. Splitting, getting up just in the shadow of the wire. And her 94 buyer, that's just about as good as what she was when she was winning the La Troyenne last year. Yeah, I mean, listen, she ran well in this race. It was, you know, a little bit um, of a, one of those situations where she was just more game than anything else. It certainly looked like a uh, point of honor um, had her shot at it there and maybe just sort of hung a little bit. Um, I don't want to, you know, take too much away from she, she's a Julie. She's a really nice horse. She's way the horse to be in here. But, you know, it's not like she totally towers over some of the other horses in this race. Then she's the horse to beat for sure. And I'm using her, but I'm not terrified of her. This is her distance at a mile and a 16th. She's going to give six pounds to the two Royal Flag, who's two for two at a mile and a 16th and might have all the upside potential in the world. She's won three in a row for Chad. And I liked what she did last time out at Churchill Downs, a little bit farther back off of the pace. She made a nice, strong run to make the lead turning into the stretch. And I wonder if she felt the effects of that layoff. Chad's usually awesome off the layoffs, and he got it done with Royal Flag. But something tells me the lemon wasn't squeezed all the way dry for that race. Race, I think he had bigger and better in mind. Yeah, that might be right. She did start to wander a little bit on the lead there, but she dug in gamely when it looked like um, the runner up had a shot at her late. She was never letting that horse get by. This Phillies looked really good since the start, Dan. You could tell on her debut that she wanted more ground. And ever since she's gotten more ground, she's three for three, and she's been very impressive in those wins. Gotham Gala adds blinkers, has winning experience at Monmouth, and goes second off the layoff for a very sharp trainer in Arno de la Cour. She does have speed. She is expected to make the front in here. She pressed the pace in the Obeya last time out. I didn't like the way she bottomed out in that race. She tired very, very badly. She's going to have to do better. Yeah, she's going to have to really rebound off of a poor performance last time. She ran some good races last year, I thought. Um, not, you know, anything that made me feel like she was going to be able to beat a horse like she's a Julie, but she ran some nice races last year. She could get a good trip in this race. Wrong color, the number four, another horse making the second star off of a long layoff. Both wins, however, came at Penn National, one at the expense of Maidens, the other against Pennsylvania Breds. Uh, she is a horse that might show a little bit of early speed, but just seems like she's up against it from a class standpoint. Yeah, I just felt like she was overmatched in this race. I respect her trainer an awful lot, but I don't like this horse. I think Vault is an alternative if you don't like the two favorites in this race. 
for trainer Brad Cox. I thought she ran fine in the Shawnee two starts back. It was a race where we thought she was going to be a lot closer to the pace. She got bumped out of there. She was taken well back. There wasn't a lot of pace on. And then she's trying to run at Dunbar Road and Chocolate Kisses, who are two very, very good horses, especially the former. I thought she was Ascension the Obeya last time out, and she got beat by a million to one shot. Lucky move. I guess she was game in the lane. All things considered, that race has to be considered a bit of a disappointment. But I think it wasn't the worst race in the world. And if she runs her usual effort, she'll be in the mix. No, I agree with that. Um, she can get a piece of this. I, you know, I, you already sort of mentioned we both were interested in her two back. I liked her again last time. Um, they was, were both, you know, the race two back was actually very good. Last time, I just didn't see the excuse, Dan. I kind of, I'm just about ready to raise the white flag on her. I, I just don't know if I want to bet her again, um, but she could win this race. Well, let's watch Vault's race in the Obeya. She made a three-wide burst to the lead. She's now down on the rail. That long shot was just to her outside on the turn, was moving better than Vault, and Vault just simply couldn't stay with her. Maybe she didn't like being herded down towards the inside, but I didn't think there was really any excuse. A 91 buyer speed figure, that's her career best, and if that's the best she can do, she's in trouble. I'm hoping Brad Cox can get her to improve fourth start of the form cycle. Queen Nakia is the number six. Queen Nakia, third in the grade three Royal Delta, three starts back over sloppy going. But when Cookie Dough beats you at a mile and a 16th, I think you have to be a bit concerned because that horse, I believe, doesn't really want to go a two-turn mile and a 16th, completely overmatched in the apple blossom. That race is a throwout. I don't think the last race was a throwout. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened either. It, it looked like she had improved um, after Safi Joseph claimed her. And for a couple of starts, she certainly did. Her last race was bad. Um, even with her improved form, I didn't think she was a contender in here. Well, the seven R super freak has done some decent things going a distance of ground. I believe she's multiple stakes placed around two turns. I think she's better in the six and a half to a one turn mile range. She ran on in the inside information last time out and she was just overmatched in that race. She actually ran quite fine to be fifth, all things considered. I just wonder if she really wants to go a two-turn mile and a 16th against this caliber of competition. I would expect an aggressive ride. Yeah, see if they can get her forward this time. The, the pace was just too fast for her last time in the inside information. She should be more forward in here. The question is, um, do you think she's good enough? She'll be a good price if you think she is. Like several horses in this race, Cloud Charmer is going to be tested for class while going second off of the layoff. She goes out for Tim Ham, who won the Schuylerville at Saratoga and is a very underrated trainer. And Cloud Charmer looked good in her seasonal debut. Let's watch that race. A $30,000 handicap at Tampa Bay Downs. And she was 30 to 1 in here on the outside. And she's going to run down this exhausted 6 to 5 favorite and get away at the end. That being said, nice performance, nice upset win, only a 71 buyer, and that is not going to do it. No, it wasn't much of a field here, but she did what she had to do. I mean, it was, you know, it, her recent form is actually pretty good, Dan. I just don't think it makes her a contender in a race like this. Sweet Sammy D, another one going second off the layoff. But it's worth noting that Pat McBurney does excellent work with horses coming off of long layoffs. And I'm guessing Sweet Sammy D was cranked up and ready to go in that race. In a blanket finish, she finished fourth. Uh, she's going to get an opportunity to stretch back out. And she was third behind Horologist in the Monmouth Oaks last year. That figure was okay, but it's kind of the one figure she has on her page that makes her competitive. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we'll see what happens. She's uh, still relatively lightly raced. I mean, of all the you know horses that sort of look like a little bit like filler in here, I thought she was the most interesting one. If you were looking for a price, you could probably do a little bit worse than Sweet Sammy D. It's still a tough spot for her, though. Let's watch that blanket finish. It was won by the 10, Flat Awesome Jenny, who got up to win it under Trevor McCarthy that day with the 73 buyer speed figure. Flat Awesome Jenny came from out of it. She was next to last. It's a good, solid enough run. Sweet Sammy D is going to finish fourth in this race. And Flat Awesome Jenny, again, a 73 buyer. It's very, very light. These horses have to improve, and they're facing tough, tough competition. Yeah, you know, I really did think that she improved after um, Kelly Breen claimed her at the end of last year. I liked some of her races at Gulfstream earlier um, this year, but they were sprinting, Dan. And I know she ran fine last time, a two-turn mile. I, I still wonder how far she wants to go. I like her a little bit better sprinting. 
watching that performance again a blanket finish she came from out of it to win it again she's going to have to step up and might uh, need some things to go her way from a pace standpoint horologist completes this field she reeled off four in a row last year three of those wins at monmouth including a score in the grade three monmouth oaks where i thought it was a pretty game performance to beat jaywalk who in her day was okay and then she backed that race up with a rock solid third in the cotillion behind street brand and guarana and I was a bit surprised that the new that the new connections turned her back right away in the Raven run. I just think seven furlongs is really, really sharp for her. The Nellie Morse, to me, even though she lost, I thought it was a disappointing performance. I know Arafan is OK. She just fit in that spot. And then in the Santa Maria, I don't know what happened. She walked off yeah. the track. So her form's a little bit dirtied up. This is class relief. She's getting back to the right surface. She's getting back to the right distance. And she's now with the great Bill Mott. Yeah, and she might actually be an okay price in this race. I mean, all those things that you mentioned, plus the, you know, add in the fact that she could be a fair price in this race. I just think she makes some sense in here. Um, I didn't pick her on top when we get to the picks, but I I'm going to use this horse somewhere. I think she's a pretty nice fit in this race. Let's get to the picks in here. Field of 11 getting set to go in the Molly pitcher. She's a Julie, very dangerous. Royal flag, very dangerous. Maybe they eyeball each other and vault. Comes with an improved performance for Brad Cox. It's more of a stab than anything else. I respect she's a Julie boy. I was wrong or bad, or, but I do give a slight edge of the two big names to your top selection, Royal Flag. Yeah, I'm just going to take Royal Flag um, and hope that, you know, a lot, a lot of the times these Chad Brown horses, even when they look like they might be a fair price, they just get over bet. And I wouldn't want a Royal Flag if she's, you know, vying for favoritism with a horse like she's a Julie. But it feels like she's a Julie should be the favorite in here. And if Royal Flag's a fair price, I'll take a shot. 21115 for Mike, 5219 for me. Closing out the Haskell Saturday card with race number 14 at Monmouth on Saturday, the grade three Molly Pitcher. Best of luck.